great lesson here today. Okay. That's just a picture of Table Mountain. As you know, it overlooks our beautiful city. Beautiful. So let's just go on to the next slide. So the, les the lesson structure has been placed in this order. There will be two lessons. In the first part, we will be discussing nouns and a few subsections of nouns. We'll be discussing pronouns, verbs, and adverbs. So the yellow, um, the yellow sheet we will be doing today. And then in the second lesson, we will be discussing the remaining parts of speech, which are adjectives, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. So that will be a lesson that will be scheduled shortly. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of insight onto the structure of each chapter, I will be giving you a presentation, okay? And then that I will teach to you. There will be a few practice sentences where you as the students are able to practice and apply what I have taught to you. And um, then after that, we could have a short activity which I've prepared. And in that way, you could try to complete and answer the questions by yourself. Okay. Is everybody fine? All Can right. Can you hear me still? Okay, we're going to start now. Okay, so just to um, clarify a little bit about grammar, um, to start off with, grammar is a system of rules that allows us to structure sentences. It includes several aspects of the English language, okay, which is parts of speech. So these words can fall into different categories based on their functions. So in this lesson, we will look first at the types of words and then see how they can help us further understand the specific part and function in the sentence. Okay, so there are eight known forms of words in the English language, typically called the parts of speech, and they are the nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. So in this lesson today, we shall be looking at the first four parts of speech, which are the nouns, a few subsections of the nouns, pronouns, verbs, and adverbs. The nouns that we shall be discussing are the following. Although I should tell you there are more types of nouns. However, for this lesson, I've selected these four to discuss with you today. Perhaps at a later session, we could have a complete lesson on nouns as a class. So the common nouns we will be discussing, proper nouns, singular nouns, plural nouns, and pronouns. So this is just an overview of how common nouns have been grouped, okay? These are the common groups for the common nouns. So they are a person, a place, animal or thing. And at the bottom of the left hand side leaflet, events as well. So these are nouns that we hear every day and that are familiar to us. It assists us with the identification of whether we can discern if they are nouns or if they belong to another group of functions. Okay, so you can all see those two um, columns, can you? Hello? <laughs> okay. Hello, teacher. Yes. Yes, can you can. See. You can see. Okay. Teacher, can you uh, screen bigger because not see which properly. which general Yes, teacher. Generally, screen which bigger. screen? The yes. screen is the screen is on the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It is. It's on my whole screen. Can you see everything? Yeah, this is no problem. Okay. Okay. Can you see? Answer. All right. So our first um, part of speech that we'll be looking at is nouns. Does anybody know what a noun is? 
Or how do we usually recognize a noun? Or what is the main function of a noun? Does anybody know that? Not yet? Okay, yes. well, we'll discuss yes, it. I can, okay. I can try. Anyone I can, can answer? Try. You can try, yes. What is your understanding of a noun? Uh, I understand all of uh, your uh, lecture and uh, hmm. uh, what is your uh, uh, what is your question, uh, teacher? Can you repeat? Okay. Please? So, would you agree with me that a noun is a word that is used to name people, places, animal? objects, feelings, qualities. So the desks that we're sitting at, that would be classified as a noun in grammar. The cat that we have as pets at home, that would be classified as a noun because it's the name of an object, an animal. The house that we live in, that is a noun because it's the name that has been given to an object. I've always remembered that a noun and name both starts with the letter N in the alphabet. So it's helped me remember that a noun is associated with the name of that particular object. And also one of the other important groups of nouns are proper nouns, you know, where we will see that um, places and countries and Anything that has specific names is given a capital letter and it has been given the um, it has been given the, the subsection in nouns as being a proper noun. Okay, so further on, another way to assist us in identifying the noun is that you may ask yourself two questions. Does this word that I'm looking at tell me that it's somebody's name? Once again, we can see that it's somebody's name or does it tell me that it's something's name? Okay, so nouns are always associated with the names of objects. And also there's a hint at the bottom of the slide. Sometimes we come across, um, we come across nouns that actually have certain words in front of them that assists us with identifying them. So examples of this are the a or N. So that would be the car. V is the, the word that is indicating to us that there is a noun afterwards. So the car is the noun. And then the second example is the book. Book is the noun and the word the is in front of it. And the last example is desk, the desk. Desk is the noun. It is the name given to that object. Okay, so in the next slide, is there anybody comfortable with perhaps reading a sentence yet? Or would you like me to read one? Just teacher, I can read. Okay, you may go ahead and read the first sentence for me. Well, thank you, teacher. I can start. Yes. Uh, yes. First the sentence uh, is, my teacher is a very nice person. <laughs> okay. So from I, that, yes, you can carry on. Tell me what is the noun there? What do you think? Which word is the noun? Uh, noun is, uh, in this uh, sentence, noun is uh, the teacher. That is correct. Okay, let's just see here. Okay. I can't try to share uh, the next sentence. Yes, yes, you have your yeah. hand up, Sidi. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Can you just go back? Okay. The, to uh, the second sentence, Colin mm -hmm. is going to go on the holiday to England. T is, here, yeah. Absolutely yeah. perfect. You've read it absolutely perfect. And now tell me, according to your understanding, which word in that sure. sentence? Okay. Yes. Okay, England, England. and who? That is, that is correct. Both of them are, done, are nouns in that sentence. And the last sentence, Arena. Okay. May I? 
Yes, you may. So, uh, okay, okay, okay. The okay, cat yeah. is asleep. Uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the noun here, cat, is their animal. That is correct. Perfectly grouped and absolutely correct. Well done, everybody. So we'll go to the next slide now. That's great practice reading. Okay, so we'll be doing a short activity together now again. I would love your particip participation with it. Okay, on the left-hand side, you see there are words in those blue blocks. And on the right-hand side, there are numbers with the with the pictures. So I would love for anybody who would like to um, match the noun with a picture and we will draw a line to connect them. So if you could read the word for me and the number which connects to the correlated noun. Yes, teacher, like I can try. Okay. Hi, teacher. Okay. Um, uh, is okay. that Arena? Okay, is that, um, who am I speaking to? Uh, yes, a uh, boy uh, yeah. ma matches with picture number one. Number one. Yes, boy matches number one. That's correct. Okay, and Sadid, would you like to answer one? Yes, teacher. Which, mm. which picture? Two or three? Yes. No, you could do the second word. You could say the second word and then... Okay, table, it. teacher. Table. Okay. That is correct. So we'll draw the line there. Edmir, this Rizvan? Is, this is Amad. Would you like to answer? May I, teacher? Yes. Would you like to... If you don't mind. Uh, so number three, uh, consider girl, and already yes. you, you mentioned about it. Uh, yes. Number four, city. City, that's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, and the fifth and the sixth one? Good, no. teacher, I can try. Okay, you can try, yes. Yes, a uh, car, uh, 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 a noun car, we can uh, uh, match with, uh, with number five. That's correct, yes. Okay. I can next, if you yes, want. Yes, you can do the next, the last one. Is okay, fine. for for last uh, noun, uh, we can that uh, a dog, uh, uh, matches uh, with uh, picture uh, six. Well done. That's correct, yes. So let's Thank go you, to the next style. You're welcome. Okay. So this is a small reading activity, also falling under the nouns. Um, so in this activity, we shall be reading the sentence and identify each noun correctly. Okay. So would anybody like to read it? and see if they could identify what word is the noun. I can try, Tisha. Okay, you can try. Yes, Tisha, see that. Who likes that. banana, bananas? Here, oh. banana is noun. Noun okay. thing. Noun okay. thing. Okay. So. Look, uh, brought. Look, uh, brought cake to the party. Here, teacher, look, it's, it's his name and cake. Okay. And party. And party. We have three now in the sentence. Well The done. last teacher or, or, or stop. Move on the next. Okay, and the next one, would you like to read? Uh, the, the rabbit, rabbit. Skip it across the road. Here, teacher, a rabbit is it is noun and road noun. Well That's done. All. Thank you so much, teacher. Okay, well done to that. Sadiq, you did very well. So all of those nouns um, that you selected was right. Okay. Um, take note of something uh, that I would like. When we see a word, like 
in the first sentence, the word before bananas, we see an ES before that. That is one syllable. This entire word is pronounced likes. Does everybody agree with me? Likes. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It will only be one word. You do not say the ES at the end. Okay. There are other words um, where you will say the ES. But for this particular type of word, likes, it is one syllable. Okay, we will get to a few of those words. We will see ES at the end, and we will say ES. All right, but well done, Sadid, and to everybody. So that's just another view of all the nouns in those. Okay, are there any questions so far for nouns? Is everybody understanding? Does everybody yeah, understand? That, no, no question yeah. so far. No That's question clear. so far. Thank you. No question, teacher. Yes. All things is clear. Everything is clear? Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So remember I said we were going to speak about certain types of nouns. Okay. So the types of nouns that we will be discussing are common nouns, proper nouns, singular nouns, plural nouns, and pronouns, okay? So they fall, all fall under the group known as nouns. Common nouns are the names of people, things, animals, and places. So what we've been discussing, majority of it that we've been discussing so far under nouns have been classified as common nouns, okay? There hasn't been anything, anything specific except that would have fall, fallen under one of those groups, which we've now known as persons, animals, events, objects. You, all of those would have been common nouns for now, okay? The next one is proper nouns. So proper nouns is more specific. Okay, you could see that it refers to a particular or a specific group of people, things, animals, and places. And this is where days of the months fall in, where a day of the week falls in, where the name of a mountain falls in. Uh, we have a name of a country, a few there, Paris, London, Friday, November, they are part of the calendar as days and months. And there is a very important hint that you could look for within sentences and within grammar in order to successfully identify and say that this is a proper noun. Okay, so a good indicator of seeing a proper noun within a sentence is that there is a capital letter in front of the word that I have highlighted in yellow. Okay, so this means that it is and has been classified as a proper noun. It has been given a specific group that it belongs to and a particular name for a reason. Okay, does everybody understand that? So my question, teacher, sorry. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, teacher. So I would like to ask you, I'd like to ask you, I think it's not common, commonly like uh, think that we have uh, a, a noun with the capital letter, with the first capital letter in the sentence. Okay. Back to, back to the previous exam. For example, I can say Ahmed uh, went to the party yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So Barty here is not, uh, or Barty here has has not like a capital letter. Okay, the 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 letter B of the Barty is not capitalized. So why why what yeah why some some nouns we have to put or we have to cap capitalize the first letter of the noun in the sentence. I, on okay. the other side, on the other sides, okay, more <clears throat> sorry. Uh, on the other side, uh, like uh, some of the nouns are not capitalized. So what what the main difference between these two situations? 
Okay. So, um, as you can see in the definition, it's written that it this particular if okay. Let's start with the word party. Okay, party falls under the group of common nouns where you have a section of events. Okay, so whether it be wedding or party or um, another event, it hasn't been given unless it has been formally been given a specific name, you know, oh. a specific name that um, you could maybe say a mask party or a opera party, you know, the word opera or the word mask might in that case have a capital letter, but the word party is common. So grammatically, it shouldn't have a capital letter, but um, according to, um, according to the, 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 the rules and the functions, uh, events um, falls under the group of common nouns. So it, uh, by default, it shouldn't have a capital letter, but you know, some, some, some people might type it with a capital letter. You never know, but it's for you to understand where exactly this name, this word party actually has been placed within grammar. You know, where does it actually belong? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it belongs under common nouns, okay, according to the functions and rules of grammar. May, and, may I add it something, please, if you don't mind? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Uh, if you're not talking about proper noun, uh, you're talking about something is uh, familiar for everyone. Like if you're not talking about that Friday, in the first letter must be the capital, you know? Yeah. Because the Friday yeah. familiar for everyone. Yes. Like you're talking about November and London and Egypt and England or something like that. That is familiar for everyone. And yes, that is very normal if you started with a capital letter. If you're not talking yes. about the party, that's infamiliar for everyone. That is not necessary to start it with a capital letter. That might be one way of looking at yes. I don't I, I don't I don't um, think there's anything wrong in saying that. It's always mm -hmm. good to remember that proper nouns usually there is only one unique word of that noun you know there's only one place called paris there's only one word in the week named friday it cannot be um friday one or friday two you know it's not going to be demoted in that way there'll only be one of a particular type, uh, type of cap, uh, proper noun you know so that is why it's for a specific group and it's, it's quite, it's one of the easier ones to understand and to recognize within a sentence, you know. So we'll just have a look at a few examples. Um, if that's okay, can we move on? Is there any more questions regarding that? We could look at some examples. Can we go ahead? Okay. So these are some examples of proper nouns. I chose these um, pictures because they all belong to a specific group of, um, of, of study, a specific group of structure, perhaps um, a place in the world. So they're all very iconic. They have big names. They have big um, relative information about it. So they're very important and they are known as proper nouns, okay? And each one of these words, objects, the, the, the mountain itself has got capital letters within it. There is only one Mount Everest. So they belong to a specific um, group of objects. They've been given, given a very special name. So that's, it's very proper, you know? So it's been made very special within grammar. So the first one is Jupiter. So this is a specific name of a planet in our solar, solar system. So we all know the solar system is very important and there are only a certain amount of planets within our solar system and they are all specific to hold their own name. So all the planets in the solar system would, would begin with 
a capital letter. That is how they have been named and classified within grammar. And also not only within grammar, but also within this specific discipline of study, the planets you study astronomy, you know, so that is specific. So they have given those planets this specific and important name, and they've begun it with a capital letter. So if you can begin to see the importance of maybe an object like a planet, it would be fair to say that it has a capital letter, isn't it? Just for easier recognition of it. So the second picture is Titanic. Does everybody remember and know about the ship Titanic? You do know about Titanic, okay, that's good. So Titanic is a proper noun as well, has been classified as a proper noun. It's the name of a specific ship at that time. It was the largest ship and that has made it so important. Uh, what even made it more important was that it unfortunately sank on April 14, 1912, and yet it wasn't ready for that sinking. So that brings a very important significance to it. And they have been, it has been given an important specific name, Titanic, with a capital letter. Okay, the second one is Paris. Now, the third one is Paris. Paris is an example of a place there's only one place in the world that is called Paris. So they've given it the name and the capital letter. It's an individual place and there's only one specific place called Paris. The same would go for Mount Everest. Does everybody know Mount Everest? It's a very famous mountain. Okay, so this is a specific name that has been given to a very important mountain range. So it has got a specific um, category that it falls under geographically, and it is a proper noun within grammar, okay, because there is only one Mount Everest in the world. Okay, so how does everybody feel familiar now with pronouns? Does it, do you understand it? Mm, is everybody so okay? Everybody so okay? Yes. So it, I'm still I'm still wondering, right? Because yeah. for for example, if I if I want to say something about uh, about any research center, for example, okay. Um, so should should I capitalize the the first uh, letter of the center, or uh, I have to keep it as like uh, normal? You can say like that. Are you talking about an actual research center, like a laboratory mm -hmm. or something? Yeah, something like that. For example, okay. if we... Okay, so... Or, well, or actually... hospital, or hospital <laughs> for example, or hospital, or hospital yes, here. Yes, no, no, that's fine. Okay, so very yeah. quick, very quickly, let us just discuss that for about a few seconds. So yeah. you have, if you have, I know a lot about laboratories. I actually um, work, I've actually uh, qualified in the profession of laboratories so yeah. most laboratories have a name yeah. but then the the second set of words you will find that it has the name laboratory or laboratories in plural it could be singular it could be plural it will always be identified okay and if it has been given a certain name which most hospitals have most um important buildings have most important um most important uh, uh, what what other example could i give if we're talking about cities or towns grammatically mm -hmm. it should be correct that you put a capital letter in but it's always safe you know the world is is very dynamic it's always safe to always research that you have Number one, the mm. correct spelling of the, the laboratory or the hospital. Make sure that you've spelled everything correctly. Make sure that the name has been spelled correctly. A lot of laboratories and hospitals, they have a, a, uh, 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 an abbreviated section in the front as well. You know, there's a dot somewhere, there's a comma somewhere. So it's always important to have the correct name. And mm -hmm. most likely the name, if you research it, is correctly on the internet and you could just make sure that you identify which um, 
which word within that name is your proper noun. And that will be the actual name of the, of the, the hospital or the laboratory. I've known quite a bit about it. So it should, it should be in that way. And it's okay. very important, it's very important um, that you do get, if you are writing emails or letters, it's very important to get the name that you're addressing to the building or make sure that it is correct, you know, make mm -hmm. sure you've spelled it correctly and that it's given the proper, because many, many mistakes can happen and then it just doesn't reach, you know, where it needs to be. Okay, yeah, does yeah. that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so let's move on. Let's see where we are now. Okay, singular and plural nouns. Okay, so singular and plural nouns are basically grouped together because singular nouns is the noun that we are going to make plural. Okay, so from the name singular, we can deduce that it's one and it is single. Okay. So a singular noun names one person, one thing, one place, one idea. It's single. It's a single object, a single name, a single person. A hint to remember, which we could use that I've mentioned here, is that we could see the words a or the words an before the singular nouns. Okay. So these examples I've put here, just for you to, to see it in a sentence I've written, I see a cat. Okay, A is the indication that it is a noun that is going to be at the, the, the next, the next word is a noun and it's going to be single. Okay, it's not going to be plural. Another example is this is an orange. Okay, and the last one is we have a car. So each one of those objects are single. It is not more than one, it is just one of those. Okay, but we will do an exercise shortly about that. So now, from the single noun, we are able to make it and transform it into a plural noun. Now, plural, by definition, means more than one. Okay, more than one person, more than one things, more than one places, and more than one ideas. And this is where the suffix um, es um, comes into, into play. So we will correlate that when a singular noun is made plural, we usually add the letter S or ES to it, okay, at the end of the word to make it plural. This indicates that it's no longer one. It has become more than one, okay? So single nouns being transformed to plural form, we will add an S or an ES as a suffix at the end. Okay, so examples of plural nouns, we have one cat. So if we add the blue S to the back of the word cat, it will indicate that there are two cats, not two cat without the, without the S, there are two cats. A book, Okay, we could see that there is a book there, but in plural, we add the S and it is books. It doesn't need to specify, you could put a number there, it doesn't change it. As long as you put the S there, it will be indicated that it's more than one book or more than one of that object. The same with a chair. It, if we add the S, it turns into chairs, okay, with, which is more than one. Okay, so just a short summary back to singular and plural. We need to remember single is falling under singular noun. It is one person, one thing, one place or idea. Okay, plural, we will transform the single, singular noun to a plural noun by adding a S or ES to the end of the word, which is basically the end of the noun. Okay, which is the suffix S or ES. So those are just um, pictures that illustrate that in the first picture, there's one singular cat. Okay, and in the next picture, there are two cats. And that is the plural of the word cat. Okay, in the middle picture, there is a book, a single book. That's the singular noun. The next picture, there are books, more than one. Okay, the next one there is a chair, 
And the next one is the plural for chair, which is added as chairs. Okay. So this is our activity that we will be doing. The instruction says that we need to add an S or ES at the end of each word. So is there anyone who would like to try the first picture and who can guess what needs to be added to the end? I can try, like to try try. Yes, yes. Who would like to try? Yes, yeah, just add ES. Okay, let's see Focus. if it's right. Foxes, okay, Focus. let's. Focus. Yes, the second yes. picture. Cow, yes. cows, yeah, just add okay. A. Yes. Okay. Thank is you so much. No problem, thank you. That is absolutely right. You've done that very well. So the first one we added, ES, okay. So that is where we have changed the singular noun, fox, which is the name of the animal, to a plural noun, which is more than one in those pictures, they, and they are classified as foxes. Okay, there was one cow, a single cow, and now there are two cows. Okay, would anybody like to try picture three Number and four? Number three. Yes, Gracies. you can go ahead. Yes. We're going to add which, which suffix is that, S or E S? Number three. Will be dresses. That is correct. We'll be adding E S to the end of the noun. And yes, number, number four, add S, mm -hmm. birds. Well done. Birds is absolutely correct. So we've changed a single number bird yeah, to number a, five. Okay, number mm -hmm. five. Keys. We add S and number six, we add S also. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much for that. That was absolutely correct. So you could see... That changing a single noun to a plural noun, we will always add at the end of that noun, once we've identi identified it, and we can see it's become more than one, we will know that we either need to add an S or an ES to the end of that word. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Pronouns, okay. So, <coughs> pronouns, this is a new section, a new chapter. So pronouns replaces the noun and renames the name of a person or the place or the idea in a sentence. So one of the ways that I remember this is that instead of saying somebody's name twice or three times in the same sentence, we're going to replace that name with the relative pronoun, whether it be a male derivative or a female derivative. Okay, and you will see that in the next um, activity that we do. So common pronouns that we find in grammar that we use on a daily basis is I, you, we, they, he, she, it, me, us, them, and her. Okay, examples of using these pronouns where we have transferred um, a pronoun in the place of the noun is the first sentence. I'm just going to go through the first one. Ethan smiled at his friend. Okay. So with Ethan being a male, we could take one of our common pronouns, which should be the correct one that we choose, is he. What we do with he is that we replace Ethan's name with he. Okay. And we could rewrite it as he smiled at his friend. We could have had a sentence that said, Ethan smiled at his friend and Ethan gave him a hug. So what the pronoun would have done is that we would have said, Ethan smiled at his friend and he, being the pronoun, gave him a hug. So we've actually just not said Ethan's name repetitively. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand that in the same se sentence? We have taken Ethan's repeated name and given and replaced it with the appropriate uh, pronoun. The second sentence is, Amanda is a very nice friend. She always helps me with my homework. So that is an example of a complete um, sentence or phrase 
where Amanda is, is being described as a very nice friend. And then to further on, this particular friend is saying that she always helps me with my homework. Now, it would be strange to say that Amanda is a very nice friend. Amanda always helps me Amanda runs very fast you know instead of saying Amanda all the time we've taken the relative and uh, correlated pronoun replaced the name and we have put in the word the pronoun in place of Amanda's name okay so the third sentence is Seth likes to play soccer so the, the name Seth can be replaced with the relative male pronoun of he and rewritten, it could read, he likes to play soccer. Okay, so let's see about this activity now. So there are two sentences, one belongs to the boy and one belongs to the girl. So the boy is saying, would someone like to read it for me? Would someone like to I read the try sentence? To Okay, you can try. Yeah, he likes to play with, you can use he because it is boy. Okay, you could just read the sentence for me. I like to play with my friends. Would you like yes, to read that? Yes, I like to play with my friends. Okay, and we can see it's a boy. So you said earlier on, which pronoun would you be choosing, he or she? He, teacher. He. 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 That's correct, yes. He would be correct. So he likes to play. And the second, um, his the teacher, second his, with his, his friends, that is correct. So we've taken, we've seen it's a boy, and we've identified that these are the pronouns that it could possibly be. Okay, he is a single boy. Okay, so it wouldn't be they, or it wouldn't be there. Okay, they and there, that is more than one person, okay? That would be maybe the boy and the girl together. Then we would perhaps use the pronouns of their or they, you know, and, and that is, 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 is um, another uh, form of the pronouns, you know, when there are groups of people and there are further pronouns for those specific groups. But today we've, we've concentrated on a single boy and then the girl, would someone like to read the sentence for the girl? I can't try to shoot again. Yes, you may. We like to cook with my mother. The okay. first, she likes to cook with her mother. Okay, so the answer is correct. She, okay, because it's a girl. We have yeah. identified it as a girl and we have replaced the noun. Yes. with she okay and her is correct as well we have replaced it with her so we have re um written the sentence as she likes to cook with her mother okay so let's see the next slide here okay the next group of words that we'll be talking about is a verb okay so can, can anybody tell me what they think a verb is? It's quite common. Does anybody know? Does anybody yes, know? Yes, teacher, I can, I can try. Okay. Yes, tell me, what do you think a verb is? Yes, uh, I can uh, say about this uh, uh, something. Uh, verb uh, for a verb in a sentence means that uh, uh, that uh, Subject uh, yeah. work work any anything uh, something uh, uh, what what uh, what uh, uh, subject uh, the subject is doing an ac a action uh, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, reflects uh, uh, over the verb. Okay. I think Maybe you're talking okay. about adverb. Okay, we're talking about we're talking about the verbs first. Okay, so we are talking about an action. Okay, when yes. I was when I was at, at at school, very long time ago, they described it or, or explained it as the doing word, a word of action. Okay, it's going to be giving the sentence more details as to what is happening within the sentence. What is the sentence? telling me, you know, if it's 
something that someone is doing? Um, you know, is there something that is being done within the sentence that someone is doing? So by definition, the verb is telling us that it's the word that someone or something is doing a action. It describes an action or experience, okay? It's going to be something physical, okay? Or it's going to be something very emotional. So it's sort of bringing more emphasis to and depth to the sentence, okay? So examples that I have on the screen, you can just imagine a sentence where there is the word run, someone is running, they're walking or they're jumping or they're pushing or they're eating. These are all actions that are being um, that are being done, okay, by someone, but it's just been written in, in, in grammar and in English. So an example of sentences that I've chosen is that Sarah ran to school because she was late. Okay, so I'm just going to elaborate on trying to, to, to explain to you why the verb is the verb and why um, it is uh, making the sentence more significant, okay? Because the verb in this sentence is ran. Okay, this is telling you that Sarah is make, is performing an action. She ha, is going through an experience. She is not just um, Sarah is on her way to school. No, but she's actually performing an action. And the verb that this that is is in the sentence, which is describing the action, is ran. So she's running very fast to school because she's late. So it's an action. It's a, an experience. It describes what the person is doing within the sentence. Okay. The second one is John loves to bake cakes. Okay. Anything that you are doing, the action that is the verb. Okay, it's the doing word, it's the action word. So John loves to bake cake. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, in this short practice exercise that we can complete together, I need a student just to read for me the first top line. Okay, because these are all verbs that are familiar to us. Could someone um, please raise their hand to read the first line? Would someone like to read it? Me, teacher. Yes, you can go on, Gabriella. This is say. a short practice exercise that we can complete together. We yes, shall... we can. It's just a reading exercise. So all that you need to do is to read the word that you see in the first block here. Okay. So what does this word in, in red say? Reading. Reading, that's correct. So it's read, okay. And the second word, how would you say that? that? It's a bird and there is a musical note there. Sing, that's correct. It seems as though the man is lifted off the chair. So it is. Standing up. Standing up, that's correct. And the last one is? Riding a bike. Riding a bike, well done. So you you can see that it's all familiar verbs, okay? And it's just, it's just um, an exercise to help you identify common actions that we do during the day or that's familiar to us. But all those actions, if we were to write a sentence, those particular words are the verbs within those sentences. Okay, so let's see if we can familiarize you with a little bit more. So let's match the verb with the correct picture and draw a line to connect it again. So the first word, who would like to try and connect the first word to the correct picture that is numbered? Me, teacher. The, okay. the first one is read. Oh, uh, the first one on the screen in yellow, which one is that? Dance number two. That's correct. Okay, would anybody Read like number to... one? Okay. Sleep number three. Okay. Ride a bike number five. 
All right. Fly number four. Absolutely perfect. Does everybody agree with that? That those are the correct nouns that correlate with the pictures? Yes. Yes, we are. That's perfect. So those are just a few more ver uh, verbs that are indicating that they are actions that are being done. Okay. So now we're getting to adverb. The adverb is a word that tells us more about the verbal adjective or other adverbs. Okay. It gives us more details now about the verbs in the sentence. It tells us how often. It tells us how, where, or when this action is done. Okay, so now it's going to be more specific about this action or the adjective or the adverbs. I will keep it down to verbs just for this class. Maybe in another class we could um, correlate it with adjectives or other adverbs to be more in-depth. But for now, in the beginning stage, we will just start off with adverbs that enhance the verb. Okay, so in the first practice, um, we can see the sentence, Sarah is always late for school. Okay, the adverb in this sentence is always, and the verb is late. The reason why the adverb is um, always, because it is indicating how often Sarah is late. So it's indicating that Sarah is often late, is always late for school. Okay, so it's showing us how often it is. That's an example of the one group. And the second group that we discussed was that it would show how an action is being performed. So it says that Ricky ran slowly. So the adverb here is slowly because it's, it's elaborating on how Ricky ran. And the verb here is ran because that is the action that Ricky is doing. So it has indicated that Ricky ran slowly, where slowly is the adverb because it elaborates on how he is running. The third one is a deer was strolling nearby. This indicates where the deer strolled, okay? And that would be nearby. And the verb that is being performed, the action that is being performed by the deer is strolling. So strolling has been uh, specified more clearly to be in the form of nearby within the environment. So the deer is strolling nearby within the environment and is indicating where he is strolling. And the last example is when. So the sentence reads, they will meet the lion later. So the adverb here is later and the verb is meet because meet is the action that they will be doing. And the adverb explains when they will be meeting the lion. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Let's see. Okay, so we have an activity now. We can do this one together just for, um, it's the last activity I think that we will be doing um, for the adverbs. So in this activity, which describes how the verb or the action was performed, I have just um, scaled it down for now that we're going to be discussing um, the, the function of how, okay, the verb or the action is performed. Although we know that there are four, which is how often, it is how, it is when, and it is where. I've chosen how just for, for this lesson today on a beginner's level, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify and select the correct verb, okay, from the multiple choice words, then write the answer in the box. Now I want everybody to take note of the hint at the bottom right-hand corner. When we are using an adverb which describes how the action is being performed, if you see within the sentence that there is a word that ends with L-Y and it, it is close to the verb, this, action, this word is usually the adverb to identify within the sentence. So adverbs which indicate how an action was performed in a sentence could commonly end with L-Y. Okay, so the first sentence reads, our family traditionally celebrates Thanksgiving in New York. Could anybody tell me which word they think, according to the hint, would be the adverb? 
Does anybody know? Okay. So, um, in we this sentence, celebration. Celebration, yes. Isn't it? yes. So, so you could. Doesn't you matter could. what we're celebrating, but we're celebrating something, isn't it? So, and this is the place, of course. New York could be New Jersey or another, you know, city. Yes. Uh, so we're actually yeah. celebration. Yes. So we're Thank technically you. discussing the adverb, which is describing the celebration. So the answer is traditionally, because it is explaining how. It is being celebrated, okay? It is a tradition. It's how they celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a tradition, okay? So that uh, selection of, oops, sorry, that selection of A is the adverb in the sentence, okay? I accidentally clicked the second answer. Okay, the second sentence reads, my brother conveniently forgot to mention that he was also involved in breaking my dad's favorite lamp. So it has been given that the verb in this word, if you can't identify it yet, is forgot. And conveniently is the adverb, okay? Because it further elaborates on how the brother forgot about it. So he conveniently forgot about to mention that he was also involved in breaking dad's favorite plan. Okay, the last two uh, sentences that we have is Sarah scored badly on her math test. Now, does anybody have a guess onto which um, word is the adverb in the sentence? Anybody? Okay. So if I were to just have a look at this word, I would say Sarah's the person scored badly on her math test. I would say the adverb is badly because it is telling me that it's describing how she scored on the maths test. And with practice, you will get to recognize what the verb is. So in this sentence, the verb is scored and the adverb is badly. Okay, so that will be the adverb in this sentence. The last sentence is the wolf instinctively smelled the dead animal and pounced on it. Now, smelling is the verb. That would mean that you could also have a look at the hint. Instinctively ends in ly. Sorry, I think I've spelled it wrongly. But it is instinctively, which is the ly um, adverb for this particular sentence. Okay, so instinctively just elaborates and describes how this action was performed. The wolf instinctively precisely smelled the dead animal and pounced on it. Okay, so let's go to the next one. A very quick quiz. Anybody could answer because we're nearly done with this lesson. I need someone to tell me what, which words are the common nouns and which words are the proper nouns. Could anybody yes, identify? I can try. Yes, you yes, can, can go ahead. Yes. You can yes, go ahead, Edmir. I can try. I can try. Let's see. I can try. Come on, uh, noun. Are, yes. Come on, nouns are uh, car and teacher. Okay, but, that's correct. But uh, proper mm -hmm. nouns are Nathan and China. That is absolutely correct. Well done to Thank everybody. You, so Thank we you. have actually, that's just proof that we have learned how to identify common nouns versus proper nouns where we can see that Nathan has got a, what's, what is highlighted under there? What has been highlighted? A capital letter, isn't it? It's a capital letter. Does everybody agree? That's a capital letter L and that's a capital letter C. So those are your proper nouns. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, identify the verb in the sentence according to the picture. Very quickly, anybody can answer. The boy is reading. So what is the verb in the sentence? Read. Reading is verb. Reading. Well done. Okay, and the second one is dancing. Well yes. done. And the next Sleeping. verb in this, 
Well done. Flying. And the next one? Flying. Absolutely wonderful. So now we've already been able to identify that the verb is the action that we are doing in the sentence. So it's absolutely amazing. Well done, everybody. All right. So just for a quick lesson review, are there any further questions? We're just running out of time, I think, but we could answer any questions. How did you find the lesson so far? How did you find the lesson? Was it okay? Yes, teacher. I can try. Okay. So we've reached the end I know, of... I know this <laughs> is uh, your first lesson and uh, first session. Uh, for yes. for first session, uh, this is a great, uh, Did great you lesson. Yes. That very, is very, very useful and... Uh, uh, especially, I I uh, have to say uh, you are very kind this time. Thank you very much, teacher. It's absolutely oh. a pleasure, so, Miss Holly. So, Miss Holly, thank you yes. for giving me the floor. I already raised my hand. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's knowledgeable and motivational above all, and definitely instructional. I mean, a lot of instruction. So this can guide you in order to so level up our English. So, thank you, Holly, Miss Holly. Yeah. It's absolutely a pleasure, and I'm glad Thank that you. it has been informative and it has yeah, made yes, it has made some clarification on um, yeah. verbs and parts of speech. Now, if you have a look at the screen, there will be a second section of parts of speech. We will just you'll just need to have a look at when that will be scheduled, and in that um, session, we will do the remainder of the parts of speech that we haven't discussed yet. Okay, there are four, but also within that lesson, we will do a whole review of the eight parts of speech that we have discussed. So you are more than welcome to come back to that class so that we could continue with. Um, the complete review of parts of speech. As you can see, there's quite a few. So we've just split them into two. So yes, um, that would be the end of the lesson. And thank you so much for coming, truly. Yeah, thank you. Take okay. Thank you, Bye. Thank Bye, you. Guys. Bye. You're welcome. Okay, everybody have a good day further. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Bye.